Give a man a fire, and he's warm for a day. But set fire to him, and he's warm for the rest of his life. Terry Pratchett, from the book Jingo. Okay, boy, have I got a treat for you today. This is a casted game with deck reviews of myself, Hippie, playing 7th Panzer against Lathans playing KDA. And this was played on the Udino Hotfix 2, I believe. And essentially, this is the patch where air's a bit useless, artillery's a bit useless, um, and people think that light tanks are very good. So... Lathan's played this game on stream, and I asked his permission, and he sent me the VOD of his stream. So after the deck reviews and the game, I will also put Lathan's POV of the game, and that's really, really useful for you guys to watch if you want to learn about what's going on, why things are happening, because he has a different perspective on the game to me. I'm trying to predict what he's gonna trying to do, he's trying to predict what I'm trying to do, and we both play with each other a lot, and we both play uh lots of tournament games and so it's this is a very high level game i suppose you could say uh i did have the advantage that lathan's was streaming which makes you play worse if you've ever tried it you'll know and i'd just seen that he had won 10 games in a row playing kda on his stream because i saw he was streaming i saw what the hell's going on here and i knew he was playing kda he'd won 10 games in a row in ranked against some pretty good players and I thought, well, I think I can beat this. So I managed to alter, I altered my deck a little bit to face his deck. So I knew he was coming, but he didn't know that uh, that I was coming, right? So that gives me an advantage. And that's why you'll see some differences between what I have here and what I have in the deck review. So for example, I'm bringing uh, the Faggot as opposed to the Conkers. And that's because I know that he's KDA, he doesn't have any heavy tanks, and the Faggot's great for sniping these little two armor boxes that he's throwing around everywhere because that's the strat but let's go into the deployment and i would like to preface this by saying that i'm very ill and so occasionally you'll just hit not hear me speak for about 10 seconds and that's because i'm coughing um for the deck reviews i can edit that out but for the game if i edited that out i can edit out the coughing right but if i edit out the video then it will seem to be skipping and you'll miss some of the action so you'll just have to put up with a slightly more nasally, slightly less talkative hippie today. Right, so here's Lathan's deck for the game, and we will go into it tab by tab. But you can see the general approach with infantry dying so much less now. You can get spammy infantry out, and with vehicles dying so much less now as well, uh, due to the nerfs to artillery and air power. Um, his vehicles, he's got the spammy vehicles out in force as well. So let's, uh, let's go into it tab by tab, but you can see the general strategy. Three truck CVs. Your other options are this thing, which is bad, and um, this thing, which is better. Why is it better? Um, because it's faster and it gets the same top armor. So, you know, two front armor, sure, but who's going to snipe your CV from the front? What are the chances? It's usually going to be a bomb landing on it, or artillery, or being shot by a sneaky unit, in which case two front armor is not really going to save you. So the question is between two of these or three of these, and obviously the car dies a lot more, but with artillery being so weak in this patch... Um, the car's more survivable, and getting one more can be really useful. Then he brings this, so that's 12,000 supply in one card, which is the highest in the game. And now you can decant supply from helicopters into supply trucks and cars and whatever automatically. It happens automatically, you just drive your empty supply car to it, and it decants the supply from the helicopter into the car. So these are now more useful than ever, perhaps even a bit too strong. Um, MTL B munitions, so you get 5,000 supply in a card and they're slow and they're armoured so they can survive how it surrounds. And once they run out of ammo, you can have them in supply even. You can either resupply them from the helicopter or you can have them in your pushes and get them to soak damage. Other notable options, so this is also 5,000 supply per card. Um, 
but it's a, it's a truck, right? So it's faster, but it's less armoured. The thing is that this is actually cheaper on a supply basis because this is 500 for 20, which means 1,000 supply for 40, whereas this is 1,000 supply for 35 points and it's faster. And with howitzers being nerfed, it's less likely to die. And air power being nerfed, it's less likely to die. So I would prefer the Euro 4320 munitions. This is another one where it's uh, basically you get 6,000 supply in a card. Uh, but if you lose this, you're really sad and you can't. Basically, you won't be able to have one of these everywhere. If you're fighting in more than three places, which you probably will be, then you can't supply all your guys at once. So, you know, that's the disadvantage of this. And you've already got enough supply in this. So realistically, I would be bringing the car, truck, whatever, and the helicopter. Apologies, I am ill. You can probably hear it in my voice, so I keep having to stop. I should get all of the moments out in the edit, but if I don't, then I don't keep having to stop to cough, basically. Next tab, so here we see the genesis of the strategy. I'm not sure that's the right way of phrasing it. Basically, these Vopos guys are pretty strong for 15.6 strength. Um... They're good in close combat, it's not really what you're getting them for. You're getting them for the fact that they can tank your, uh, for your for your blob of cheap vehicles. Um, Scorpions are alright, I guess. And they bring their own AT, which is actually really, really useful. And you get 12 of them. You do get them in the, the malice condition, so Zero Vet has these problems. And... Yeah, that's that's hard, but basically these guys are just a screening force in front of your damage dealers. So that's what you're buying them for. And he brings them in the SPWPSH, which is kind of bad for 25 points. But basically KPVT, even on the... What's this even called? Even on poor experience, um, with the problems, is still pretty good. Uh, the red makes it look worse than it is, basically. So it's good to have. I'm just going to see if I can find an SPW70 somewhere. No, it doesn't look that way. I just wanted to compare it to a non, non-red non one, but it looks like there's not one in this deck, so that's okay. Whatever. Oh, there we go. Right, 20%, 5%, 375. 16%, 4%, 3, 3, 3. Right, so it's really not that different. Because it's 20% less, but it's 20% of 20%, which is 4%. So he brings 24 Vopos, and he brings some actual infantry, Motschutzen, in the truck. The problem with the BTR 50 PK is that it's bad. Um, you know, for 20... I think, realistically, all of these tin cans, they, these should be 15 points. Although, it's got two front armor, but, you know, MMG, not fantastic. I think for 15 points, maybe good, but... Yeah, better to bring it in the car and sell the car at this point. Spetsnaz, you always need these guys. I mean, the price keeps going up, but they're still strong. 80 points now, so 100 with the car. But Special Forces and Shock and RPO, 2 PKMs, 10 good SMGs, 12 strength, advanced deployment. Spetsnaz and Spetsnaz OP are basically the best in the game, if you ask me. As a, as a cohesive unit, obviously the price keeps going up. So yeah, the uh, so yeah, the uh, Spetsnaz OP are the anti-tank capability to complement your Spetsnaz RPG twenty nine is very good. Um, decent rate of fire, great penetration, max range for a rocket launcher, decent accuracy. It's come down a bit. I believe it used to be sixty something, but it's still very strong. So you keep a couple of these guys at the back of all of your pushes. And they just delete any IFVs that they can. Pioneer Flam for when you run out of Spetsnaz. Um, flamethrowers need to be stationary. Uh, they keep changing all the damage values on infantry. Right now, infantry doesn't really deal damage to other infantry with small arms. Assault rifles and machine guns might as well just not exist. So that's why you bring the flamethrowers and the RPOs. Because that's the only thing killing the infantry from other infantry. Uh, satchels are all right as well now because infantry damage is so low. 
SPG nines, because yeah, as we said, it's hard to kill infantry with infantry, and that's what these guys do now. Um, typically useful for open spaces and hiding in buildings, putting in forests. Thirty Mike Mike, as the Americans affectionately call it. This is a grenade launcher which should have indirect fire, but doesn't for balance reasons. Um, and yeah, so this is is static, right? But it's twenty kilometers an hour. So why do you get this over the NSV? The NSV you get more availability, but with a change to a suppression based meta, the grenade launcher is actually really really good. Having said that, the full strength of the NSV is um, good. But yeah, it's all about that suppression, baby. Apologies, I keep needing to stop to cough. Um, KDA Fura, so three availability, six strength guy. Right, These, th this is two, this is two, this is two. And then your other three is the Vopos, which only has three strength of five points less. So the KDA one's the best one. Yeah, it doesn't do so well under fire, takes well suppression in combat. Uh, if this guy's in combat, you've got a serious problem already. Last unit in the tab is a Conkers on two veterancy, which leads to a loss of two availability. So why two veterancy? Well, in this suppression-based meta, Infantry ATGMs have this problem where when people shoot at them, they get suppressed and then they miss, uh, which makes them less useful. So by having it at two vets, you avoid that problem a little bit. You could avoid it even more by having it at three vet, but at that point you only get two, and you need more than two. Artillery, so card and mortars in the MTLB. The advantage of the MTLB over the truck is that you should be keeping the transport anyway to move these guys around to avoid counter battery and to reposition them and um, the MTLB can survive counter battery and the truck can't because it's not it's got less than one armor so it takes increased damage from HE stuff like that D20s once again MTLB so your choice of artillery and KDA um, so the D paradoxically the D30 is actually a smaller caliber than the D20. And that's just something you got to get used to. You can look at the aiming times and the fire rates with the nerfs to howitzers in general. It's now more of a case to be made for the light howitzers because, well, they, they deal one less HE, um, but they fire faster and they aim faster. So the jury's out. Like I said, this was played on the first day of the patch, and so it's impossible for us to know yet. And that's one of the joys of this game. And then you've got the uh, M46. This thing's massive. Um, so it's got big range, I guess. And it's an intermediate caliber, so it does a little less HE, and but but it fires at the same fire rate, so... And it costs more, even though it's worse so there's really no reason to get the uh the 130 millimeter right now and he brings two cards of them um this can probably slot thing right yeah one ap so there's really nowhere else he could spend that one ap and that's probably why he has four tank tab so you can see what kind of strategy he's going for here a big push of light Right, so you call them light tanks, even though obviously this is a bit of a difficult thing to pick up, even if you lift. Um, but the reason we call them light tanks is because they're lightly armoured and lightly gunned, right? And light on the wallet as well. So 24 Schwimpanzer PT, 76 Bs, uh, 30 points. So basically, if you thought the Scorpion rush was bad with the Warriors... Pact has been able to do something better for ages. The Scorpion Rush was nerfed. The Pact one hasn't been touched. Um, so this is just a better version of the Scorpion Rush. So 24 of those at 30 points each. T34. Um, it's cheaper, right? It's cheaper because it fires less 
fast. Um, it's got one more armor, but it's just it's not really as good, right? Because um, guns worse, does less penetration, less HE, and fires less. So really, the Schwim is better, but the T thirty four can take a hit in max range. Whatever, just bring both. Uh, T62M, so you, these, this is the heaviest tank that KDA gets, and it's got this 2800m uh, range ATGM, which is really useful um, in terms of its tank capabilities. It's really not that great, but it's cheap. And then two cards of T55A, uh, Max Vet. So these guys are really good for 55 points, and you know, they can take a few hits. The gun's not great, but it's it for 55 points it's really good this is one of the most cost effective tanks in the game recon tab so more pt 76 b's let's do a comparison here shall we so what's the difference what are you paying 10 points more for you're paying 10 points more for optics and veterancy do you see these come at two vet and these coming at one vet so yeah it's all about the optics and the veterancy you should always bring a recon helicopter. These things are very useful for seeing opponents, so you can shoot them. And Spetsnaz grew, so these guys are quite good. VSS Vintress still doesn't have enough ammo. Runs out of ammo in 1 minute and 15 seconds. Thank you, Regal. And, um, hang on, is that right? Or was it 1 minute 20 seconds? I can't remember. Um, he brings it in the truck, right? So you could bring it in the rocket helicopter to get some more rockets. But the fact of the matter is, these guys are... You, you really want to spam these guys quite a bit because they're 7 strength and they've got good good stats with the special forces. And they're only 10 points more than the regular AV clearer, which well, it's kind of hard to see because the transport options are in the way. That's really annoying, actually. Regular Alf Clarus, three less men, ten less points, not shock, not special forces, worse rocket launcher. So, and they don't even come in the cool car with the KPVT. So yeah, Spetsnaz grew the best recon you can get, and because you want to spam them, get them in the trucks. Book, got a very nice range right now. There's a problem with the range in the game. The maximum range of all missiles seems to be four kilometers. Some sort of bug, presumably it will get fixed. Um, but it just means that you're not shooting people who are six kilometers away. You're shooting people who are four kilometers away. FLA, so this thing's great. And, um, well, it's not as good as it used to be because the aiming time's been increased. So you're gonna struggle to like one bang planes like you used to. It used to just be a deletion machine. It just used to kill everything in front of it. But it's great to keep in the push because it's got five armor. Good against helicopters. Stuns things very fast. Good against infantry. Can shoot aircraft. And then the Osa, which you know, it's, it's really good missile. AA. Lathans likes these a lot. They are very good. Right? Shoots quite fast. Seven HE, six missiles good range. The issue is this less than one armor means that it can be shot by everything, like including small arms, because it's less than one. And so if you have this in your push, it dies, because it gets shot once and it explodes. Other notable mentions, Strellas, you know, at the lower end of the game, people look at this accuracy and they think that's bad, I'm not bringing it. The advantage of these guys is exceptional stealth, which means that you can have them with your push at the front of the push with the infantry, and they'll take two shots to kill. Um, but the point is that the enemy won't really see them, and so you can have them further forwards than your other AA, and that can protect your forces. Makes them really useful, especially for 10 points. The issue is the transport's 20, so it's costing you 30, uh, and then you've got to wait for the transport to sell before you can get the rebate on your UAZ. Helicopters, um, you've only got one armoured helicopter, in this division, and that's the MI24PA2. You can get two cards of it. It's good. Um, I don't. So sometimes you have the option of bringing less cocons for less money, which I would take. But here you don't have that option. And so two of those. Yep. And then Lathan's enjoys bringing these 
um, which I don't think are very good, but he seems to like them a lot. They're great for shooting rockets at people, but they're, they've got less than one armor, eight HP, they can die in one pass from a plane. Uh, so bombers are a bit useless right now. Um, I've been substituting them for the rocket plane. Because this was played on the first day, I think Lathans hadn't figured that one out yet. Or he just didn't care. So the cluster's still useful. And now, yeah, it's all about the AT missiles as opposed to HE bombs for killing tanks. It doesn't work anymore. So this is a very good missile on a decent plane. Cheap, available. The best ASF that you can get. It's not fantastic, but just keep in mind that all your missile ranges are locked to 4 kilometers in this patch, which presumably will be fixed, but it's not been fixed yet. Um, then he brings a HE bomber, but he's not bringing this for the bombs, he's bringing it for the gun. The gun on this thing's really good. It's got 5 penetration. So you can kill tanks with this by shooting them. And it's slow, so it can get all the rounds off on one tank. So that's what it's for, and for shooting aircraft. It's not for the bombs, because bombs don't do anything anymore. You used to see this a lot um, with every division that gets it, but now it's gone from killing people to just doing literally nothing. So that's why you don't see that so much anymore. So this is my deck from the game, and I was wondering whether or not to share this one with you or the updated deck. For the patch because well I'm just going to show you both I'm going to point out what's changed so in this one I brought the faggot at 2 vet and the reason why is that I knew that Lathans was on KDA because he'd been playing KDA 10 games in a row on stream and so I thought well next game I'll just search and I'll play him you know I didn't stream snipe him I just closed the stream when the game started you just have to trust me bro would I lie to you but I knew what division he'd be on, and so I swapped out the Conkers for Faggots. And I was testing this Napalm plane, because I knew that bombers were bad now, so I thought, well, maybe the Napalm's better. Um, that didn't work. <laughs> so I'm going to just go through my normal 7th Panzer deck. Uh, that's weird. Okay. I'm just going to go through my normal 7th Panzer deck, because there's no point giving you outdated information. Tab by tab, so I bring three cards of supply now to keep everybody supplied. This thing we spoke about in the KDA deck review, so 6,000 supply. This thing we spoke about in the KDA deck review, so 5,000 supply. This thing we spoke about in the KDA deck review. <laughs> Other notable mentions, you could pay 100 points for a worse vehicle. You could pay... 20 points more for a BMP-1, and then it can die. You can pay 15 points more for a KPVT on your truck that you don't want anywhere near the front line anyway. So you got to ask yourself what the point is. It's also slower for some reason, despite being the same vehicle. Actually, that's not true. It's not the same vehicle. Uh, but yeah, it's slower off-road as well. And So you get a KPVT, but is that going to help you? You shouldn't really be shooting anyway. You should be hiding with this. No car CV option for 7th. Infantry tab, Panzer Jaeger in the SPW-70. So you see that this thing is a lot better than the KDA vehicle just because um, it's got two armor instead of one, two front armor. And it's not got that stupid uh, veterancy malice. So yeah, I bring all my guys at max vet. Well, we'll get there. Um, Panzer Jaeger in the SPW-70. So Panzer Jaeger, great for killing tanks at very close range. Um, you don't have any 850 meter range rocket launches as 7th, which is sad. But these guys are great for sneaking around the side and blowing things up. I actually tend not to use them that much, um, but I, I'm trying to use them. Mot shuts them, so there's been some changes to these. So I used to say that the faggot's better, and it is, but it's not worth 5 points more than the Mariuka. Because it is, the faggot is better. Um, just because of the accuracy and the way that scales over distance even though this has longer range, um, the faggot's better. But yeah, it's not worth five points more. So three cards of Mott Schutzen in the BMP SP2. In the suppression meta, the these light uh, IFVs are quite strong because they don't seem to die so fast. Uh, and they can fire toes. So yeah, they're great. And you can keep your infantry in them and drive them close if you want. 
I bring one card of Mott Shutson in the SPW70. So SPW70 great fire support. I bring it over the car whenever I can. It's got this KPVT, which is fantastic. And with the veterancy bonus, you know, it's doing really quite well for itself. And it's got two front armor, which means that uh, basically when somebody shoots a vehicle with people inside, because of the overkill mechanics, the amount of extra damage that you've done exceeding the vehicle's HP and armor, etc., will be applied to the infantry inside the vehicle. And by having two front armor, you'll actually find that your guys tend to survive a lot, or at least some of them will survive being hit by a tank that blows up the vehicle. So that's a great advantage over the one armor vehicles, like, for example, the FV432. More Mott Shutson, more Mott Shutson. Why am I bringing them at max vet? Because um, uh, you should, because it reduces their suppression. And do you need... 27 of these people probably not i don't i need 18 i need less than 18 in most games because infantry don't really seem to damage other infantry anymore don't actually need that much infantry pioneer flam for you know flamming people oh that's weird accidentally had them in the wrong vehicle um yeah, I don't get RPO napalm launchers, so this is the next best thing. And yeah, so in the game, I brought faggots because I knew I was against light, spammy rubbish. But generally, I follow the Conquer's philosophy, and this should be in the SPW-70 as well. Artillery. With the nerfs to artillery, I've gone from two cards of Akatsias to one card of Akatsia. And I bring mortars in the MTLB, as we spoke about in the KDA deck review. Other notable mentions. Oh, hang on, that's the same unit. I'm losing it, man. Tank tab. I bring all the T-72s. Um, this is the most expensive T-72. It has the most armor. Next down, you have the second... This is my favorite T-72 at 135 points. And I used to bring it at max vet. I now bring it at two vet because I always try and back it up with a T-72 leader which buffs everybody up around it by one vet. Um, I have a hard time keeping these guys alive, actually. I keep getting them killed, but I'm getting better at it, and it buffs up all my T-72s, and that allows me to just not run out of T-72Ms. So yeah, spam those. And um, yeah, then you've got the regular T-72, which has the less range on the gun, and because of the way kinetic scaling works... Um, this is your know, penetration at maximum range. And for every 175 meters, I believe, you get closer to the target, you gain one penetration. So this will always have one less AP than this. So that's why I prefer the 135 pointer. The 110 pointer, so I bring it on max vet for like low intensity areas. And, you know, places where I'm not going to have a leader backing it up. And so I've got the advantage of this max vet. Then I bring the T70, T55 AM2B. So the T55s went up in price by 10 points or what have you. So I used to bring... Let's talk about this first. I get this for the 2800 meter range ATGM. That's why I get it. It's a movable ATGM. And it has tank-like characteristics, and it can tank a couple shots, but that's generally I'm getting it for the ATG. I used to bring this 95-pointer as an infantry fire supporting vehicle, but I now think that this has no place, because for 110 points you can get the T-72, which is better. Um, just looking at those stats, it's a lot better. And for, you know, for 40 points less... You could get the T55A, which is just way better for the price. Obviously, it's a worse vehicle, but look at what you have to pay 40 points for. You pay 40 points for three armor and some accuracy on the gun. So I don't think the 95 points has a place anymore. So yeah, I bring the T55A at max vet. This is my infantry fire support vehicle for forest combat. Um, that's typically what I use it for. Then I bring the T-72 Führer. Um, I want two, so I bring it at two vet. And yeah, this guy's great. I try and keep him alive. He can survive one toe two shot. 
It's weird. So with the changes to tank CV prices, they're a bit all over the place now, actually. Um, but yeah, I'm paying 50 points for tank CV, which ain't bad. And I use this to buff up my T-72Ms. Then I've got this nice cohesive blob of T-72s, but not too close together because you'll die. I would like the AM2 Führer, but sadly it only comes at one availability, so instead I get the T-55A Führer, which is 60 points more than T-55A regular. And this is just tank CV, right? I need CV, so I bring this. If I could get another card of T-72 Führer, I would. Recon. So my Avclera come in the cool truck with the KPV T and its own optics and its own stealth. Um, so that's why I bring those. Always bring a recon helicopter. Um, Mo tries Alclera, so I get these guys because they got seven strength, and I have them at the front, tanking shots. You can bring them in this, but I don't see the point. It's only got good stealth, a good optics and mediocre stealth, and it's a BMP one. I don't need more BMP ones. So bring them in the trucks. I like to spam them, and I have these guys at the front. They can take seven shots. Um, and that gives me good information so my tanks can engage the enemy tanks. Other notable mentions. You can get the spe Special Aufklärer for 15 points more. And they do have two more strength and they are special forces so they are pretty good. The issue I have with them is that they only have four availability. And I typically buy all of these in a game. So for what I'm using it for... You know, so these guys are great because they're special forces and they're shock and they're airborne apparently. Oh! Oh, they get airborne forward deployment now. Oh, they didn't get that before. Hmm. Might be worth taking these now. They didn't used to get that. They would just get recon forward deployment. Well, it's up to you. This is what I run. And I might change it. If I can find two points somewhere. Uh, hmm. Well, anyway. Won't dwell on that. But I do think that these are now these now have their place because of the, um, the f airborne forward deployment. As opposed to recon forward deployment. Which actually solves one of the main issues 7th had. Which was that it had no airborne forward deployment. The other one is helicopters. Amazing segue. So, Shilka Cub combo. Shilka should deal one damage to enemy planes. Cub should deal one damage to enemy planes. You'll note that the price of the Cub has gone up and its range has gone up. That's actually, for me, a big shame. Um, I preferred it when it was cheaper. But given the problems with missiles not going further than four kilometers right now, you don't see the benefits that you're paying for yet. You also get Iglas in seventh an hour as you didn't used to. And so these are great. I bring these. I have them near the front. They're good at dealing with helicopters. But you'll note that um, the only thing that can outrange helicopters with 2,800 meter range 80 gems is this. And I just can't fit it into the deck. I need the Shilka Cub combo. And I really like having the Iglas. The problem with this is that it has bad stealth, so it dies. Whereas the Iglas, even though they have less range, 200 meters, um, they've got exceptional strength, so they could get closer. Helicopters, so I do not like these under-armoured ones, so I bring one card of the Mi-24P AT, so four Cocons, that's why it's 20 points less than the KDA one, everything else is the same. And two of these Mi-24Ds, so the Falang is terrible. I'm pretty sure it doesn't even one-shot like a T-55. Uh, but you're bringing it for the armour and the gun, and, you know, the Falanger helps, right? But that's not the main point of it. Air tab, best ASF that 7th gets isn't fantastic, um, but you get it because you need an ASF. The seed plane's really good, you get far availability, you can, you can even use it to kill helicopters, although typically you tend to have to use them in twos now to do that. Also great for actually shooting enemy AA. The AT plane is really good, this missile is really good at killing tanks, and with the demise of HE bombers you sort of need that. Cluster, um, I've been told that so different people have told me different things about Cluster. Some people tell me it's useless, some people tell me it still works. Uh, I haven't even bought this yet, because I usually just go straight for the AT plane. So, 
I don't even know if it's good or not. And in the game, I brought this napalm plane, but it doesn't work. Um, so I have since replaced it with this rocket plane, which does work. Uh, it's not really as good as the as this used to be, but it's a lot better than this is now. So you use this to snipe infantry at the front of pushes, snipe isolated infantry. You don't really want to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with enemy AA or ASF, so it's just for killing those guys that uh, are protected by enemy air defense. Or sniping high-value targets in buildings and stuff like that if you're doing a push and there's a building in your way as infantry takes so long to kill other infantry now. Just in general, infantry is very tanky. So that is when you would use this to just come in, snipe the building. Maybe it dies, but you've accomplished your push objectives. You can then advance further forwards. So once again, I'd like to apologize for my nasally voice. I am ill, but I'm just sad at home doing nothing. And I wanted to cast this game. So let's start with Lathans's deployment because um, I knew what he was going to do, right? Because I had seen that he was streaming him playing KDA and spamming these guys. Right, so starting with Blue's deployment from left to right, we have Spetsnaz Gru going over to this building here. Spetsnaz Gru get recon forward deployment. MI24P82, Lathans knows that 7th struggles with helicopters because they don't have any 2,800 meter range anti-helicopter stuff. And so that's probably why he's bought this. Three Recon PT-76s going here. Behind that we have Car CV, SPG-9, two Conkers. The reason these are reading Max Vet is because the Fuhrer is buffing them up. They're actually two Vet. Vopos, which are these spammy infantry screening units, two Osas. And let's have a look at where everybody's going. So the Fuhrer is going up to here, down to here, and then back to here. So he one Fuhrer to cap all three points. Let's get rid of that. The Osas are going to here to support this push that's going to be happening over here. So let's get rid of those. The Vopos are going up to here, I think. Yeah, they were. And I think there's a S... Well, let's have a look. Yeah, the SPG-9 is going up to there, and the Conkers are going to here, and I think it was to here. So he intends to block on this side, push on this side. And the push will come in the form of light tank spam, which is what's taken the meta by storm, and that's why I wanted to cast this game to show you um, what's going on. And yeah, essentially it's the PT-76 spam. So this is like the Scorpion spam, but cheaper and better in every way. So naturally the Scorpion spam was nerfed and the PT-76 spam was not nerfed. Because I didn't make a video of it. I just have to make a video and then the problem solves itself. So here I am making the video. You can thank me later. So he's going to attack with loads of light tanks, backed up with some Vopos, some SPG-9, a helicopter, two Osas, and he's going to push across here. On the right, he's got a holding action, so one Spetsnaz OP can really kill anything coming down this road, vehicle-wise, and then one Pioneer Flam can stun all the infantry coming down this road and buy you enough time. So that squares it for Lathan's deployment. Over on my side, I'm playing 7th Panzer, which I like to play. I know there's a light tank rush coming, but I don't know where it's coming from, and I don't know where it's going to. So that's why I have this dispersed deployment here, because I need to see it. Got one motorized Arthur going to here. So you'll note that they always tend to go into this building by themselves if you've got auto cover on. Um, but you want them here, so that they can see down this road. You'll also note that the LOS tool has changed. Blue now means um, it, it can see you, theoretically, but with your current optics power, you can't see it. So... Maybe I'm phrasing that incorrectly. Um, blue means you could see it if you had better eyesight. And, um, you know, greyed out means you couldn't see it regardless of your eyesight because there's a tree in the way. So I got those guys going up to there and one T-55A just in case spets now start coming down this road. I can, I can smack them. Keep in mind KDA gets the better infantry. Because of the Spetsnaz. 
I got one motorized out clear going here to provide vision. You'll note that the blue is actually showing the recon for the car, not for the infantry inside the car. So the infantry inside the car should see better than this does. Behind that, I got one CV going to here. I like to open two CVs because my second CV is a tank CV. Um, so yeah, then I've got Motri's Alclero going to here to provide good vision. And once again, it's showing the one for the car. Not for the infantry inside the car. And yeah, here's my push. So, Curb Shilka Supply. Curb Shilka Supply going to about here. And then I've got three T-72s going here. Because I assumed that he would push down here. But looking back at it, and obviously I was in this game, so I remember what happened. He did not push here, but I thought he would. But the thing with a tank is that you can move it, right? So I got three tanks, three medium tanks to deal with these light tanks. And then I got two faggots. One's going to here, one's going to here. To cover the side that I'm not going to be on. And that's the great thing about um, about playing on the first day of this new patch, is that we both come in with our presuppositions, right? I was under the impression that medium tanks would be really strong this patch. And Lathan's was under the impression that light tanks would be really strong this patch. Um, and that shapes our decisions, and you go into the game and you fight for your idea... It's really, really cool. I really like it. Basically, you know, I have an idea of how the game is going to be played, and I fight for it. And he has an idea of how the game's going to be played, and he fights for it. And then we see who was right. And so that's why I really like playing when, when everything's still up in the air. A lot of people ask me why I don't play more Red Dragon. The game's been solved. Uh, I know that people with 10,000 hours in Red Dragon will tell me, look, there's actually a surprising amount of variation in the game. Yeah, you might say that, but there's really only a handful of competitively viable maps and strategies. And people just do the same thing over and over and over again for thousands and thousands of hours. And it reaches this point where there's always a tank in X bush, because X bush is the best place for X tank. And um, that's, you know, for me, that's very boring. But some people like the familiarity, and they like that feeling of slowly getting better. Um, and they don't really have to think too much because, you know, they've, they've played it so many times that it, it's quite low stress for them. So, recon helicopter going over to this side, because I assumed, like I said, PT's coming down here. One more tries out Clara going to this building first, and then I'll jump him into this one. And behind him, another faggot um, to, you know, shoot these light tanks wherever they may be. On the right, I've got some recon, so I'm going to drop the guy off here, use the car to scout and then send the guy around and snipe some stuff. So that about cues it for the deployment, and we're now going to go into the game. And once again, I'd like to apologise for the uh, lower quality of this cast. I am quite well, so at some points I'll just... You just won't hear me speaking for 10 seconds, and that's because I'm coughing my lungs out. Right, so they're off, and everybody's going to where we said they were going to go, because we have the power of foresight. So, uh, what to say about this new patch? Basically, it seems that infantry are quite hard to kill with other infantry. The killing power of infantry is reduced a lot. And in this suppression-based meta, the planes have just been nerfed. And that helps vehicles, basically. And artillery has been nerfed. It used to be that you could just get two paladins and blow up any unit in the game, for better or for worse. Can't do that anymore. And that benefits vehicles, yeah, because you can no longer blow them up with waves of bombers um, and artillery barrages as much as you could before. Once again, I'm going to be casting from this perspective, because it's scientifically the correct way of doing things. And we see that I'm plus... I was plus two with my 2 CV advantage, but now I'm not. And because I've got tank CV, I've got 2 CVs, just in case, you know. It also helps against rear line action, stuff like that. So when I get in here, and this was a misplay, I could have come, come slightly up here and got in there a few seconds faster. Then um, 
yeah, I'll be I'll be plus five for a second, I suppose. Which is helpful. So, Vopos pushing here with the SPWs behind them. And we've got the faggots pouring it onto them. This SPW is in a bit of a dumb position. It's weird because the lost tool says that it can't be seen, but it definitely can be seen because it's dead. And the faggots do kill these things if they hit them. My T-72s are now shooting a guy in a building. Guys in buildings are quite hard to kill right now. <laughs> so, yeah, that's frustrating because every shot that I'm shooting at enemy infantry is a shot that I'm not shooting at enemy tanks. As we can see, there's a lot of tanks over here. I lose my faggot, and now I'm basically blind in this area. This guy can still see a lot of them, though. He can't see these, but he can see those. MI-24P is coming up for the T-72. I tried to move the Shilka forward, so I'm scared the Conker is going to snipe things. So, you know, smoke back. Try and keep your smoke. BT-76s can't one-shot a two-armored vehicle. I lose my recon helicopter, now I really am blind. This guy manages to smoke in time, it's fantastic, and this blob's getting further in. But I've got the T-72s here, which means that he cannot cross this line um, and get into my forest and into my back line here, because once he does that, then I'm toast, right? And I now have a 200-point advantage, so I would win this game if it ended right here. So the T-72s take a lot of damage from these guys. These are heat rounds. Um, which means they always deal the same amount of damage regardless of distance. You see they're missing a lot, but once you become low cohesion you become a bit rubbish. Advantages of T-72s though, is that they have an autoloader. Which means that once your cohesion goes down, your fire rate stays the same. You still take the accuracy problems, but you don't take fire rate problems. Which these guys would do. So, the advantage of mediums is that they beat light tanks. Um, and they're still cost efficient. Sadly, I lose T72 there, because, yeah, this is really hard to deal with. So you just got to keep reversing. And Lathans is doing an excellent job of keeping the Vopos in front of his PT76s to tank, because it just takes so long to kill these guys. However, he's not been bringing his AA up. Um, his AA is way too far out of position, so I buy two helicopters, and now all this is, uh, you know boss to withdraw. I try and drop a cluster but I'm there's something wrong with it like I targeted a unit and it disappeared and then it just didn't drop its bombs so you've got to attack position. I see the Osa moving up possibly because of this guy I saw him here um, but he's still not in range right? So cluster uh, gets oh it still didn't drop its bombs okay but yeah, you see that I've managed to nullify his push by reversing and by um, bringing in these helicopters. These T-72s should have an infantry in front of them because if there's somebody spicy here, then they'll, they will die. And I lose my command tank to these side shots from these conquers because I'm not paying enough attention. Here come some more PT-76s. So these are 30 points and these are 130 points. So you can get four of these for one of these. Each T-72M has to kill four PT-76s to be viable. And you see in this suppression based meta we're missing a lot. However near misses cause suppression and when you clump up like this one near miss can suppress multiple units. These conkers are out of ammo thankfully for me. And you see how the BMP-1s actually help with this as well by firing the Mayukas. Um, which do have low accuracy but better than nothing. And the Vopos are in over here, but because of the handy work of these helicopters, which are now out of ammo, and so cannot be sent over here. I've managed to kill everything over here, um, but that was a very squeaky bum moment, as they say, for me. And it looks like there's some T-34s coming down here. Lathans is plus three because I lost my command tank to those side shots from those conkers. I do find it difficult to keep it alive. And so I lost that lead that I had due to a simple tank CV snipe. So that is the disadvantage of the tank CV. And really, I, you know, I could have sent this up to here really, really fast and lost about 20 points. But I forgot. <laughs> <laughs>
So that extra work that I put in buying this thing is just totally wasted. So I'm trying to advance here, but I don't have recon. So I And once I see this helicopter, I realize how bad an idea it is. I really need recon with this. Try and bring the angler up, but it's probably not going to reach that. Helicopter's resupplied, and we're in over here. And I think, how do I get back into this game now that I've lost? I'm losing, even. Not sure what that guy's doing over there. I ping this because I see it. And I'm thinking that I want to get in over here at some point. And I can never do that as long as there's somebody in this building. So that's why these men have been sent forward, just to scout a little bit. Get some more infantry in here. This is a bad unload, really. <laughs> if there was a tank here, they'd be dead. So now I can start shooting these guys. Lathan's quick on the evac, but doesn't save the OP. I drop the napalm directly on this guy. And then he just sort of walks through it and doesn't really take much damage. Because um, bombers aren't fantastic now. So, yeah, I mean, it's basically perfect napalm. And it did a bit, I suppose. He's on low cohesion. He's walked through it, and he's, uh, and he's taken half his HP. But that used to just kill him. This guy's now not in such a great place, and I brought a CV up for here. And it's another tank CV, but I'm going to hide it this time. Lathan's trying to get through on the right, but I've got these helicopters up. And he's not got any AA with his pushes. His osas are too far away. There's no AA with this push. So I have a helicopter. And as soon as I realize what's going on, I have a helicopter on low altitude. As soon as I realize what's going on, I'm going to fly this over and kill those guys. This guy got some kills, and then I should have run him back straight away, really. As opposed to keeping him there, because, you know... Now he's going to die, and he didn't have to. I could have just sent him over here, and then 10 minutes send him back. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just trying to whittle down these forces here, but like I said, one T this is a regular T-72. One T-72M has to kill four... Um, even if it killed four PT-76Bs, it still wouldn't be trading effectively, because that would only be 120 points, whereas a T-72M is 135. And once again, you see more unsupported pushes here. Because, um, yeah, this is the aim of the game right now. Everybody's doing this, which is why I wanted to showcase this game. The Falanga doesn't really kill things. doesn't really hit anything. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm suppressing it all. As long as I can keep these helicopters alive, these little blobs he's sending everywhere without air support are going to keep dying to the helicopters. This guy's still here, though, and I can't see him. And I'm just working on reinforcing now, because this tidal wave keeps coming towards me. However, because of my negligence with my CV tank, I am going to lose this game now unless I get back in here sometime. Somehow. So all Lathans has to do is sit here, and you see this defensive concave shape here. So anybody that advances gets hit from multiple angles. But, importantly, there's no one left in this building. So, that's where we're going. Slowly. I need to build up first. And now all these guys have to repair. And wasting your supply on repairing a T-34 is not really what you want to do. Especially because fuel is relatively expensive in terms of supply cost as well. And they'll need refueling as well. So this really drains your supply running all these little boxes. Uh, if you have to heal them, right? And yeah, this is basically the tactic of the day right now. You get Vopos behind and tanks. Now you get Vopos in front, tanks behind, right? And you just sort of walk towards your enemy. And because everything takes so long to die, you're probably going to get to where you're going. On the right, though, everything's dead. And my recon helicopter survived. And I just drive this T-72 forwards because I saw that Conkers out there and I just get a... Get one shot off at him because he only had one HP and then I drive back. Over here I've got my mod shot snub, but there's no tank behind him. And advancing up here is really hard because you get shot in the side by all these conkers. Take a hit there. Should be a bit more aggressive on my supply. See I'm bringing some more supply up. And I try attacking here but it, I mean it's really not to be. My AA is out of position. No man pads. Man pads are great for pushing. And uh, yeah, I'm just getting chewed up by this rocket. 
helicopter. So I get one guy in, but what's it worth, really? He's gonna die anyway. So, yeah, it's not looking great for me at all right now. I'm on the back foot, and there's just this endless ocean of bodies coming towards me. If my tanks aren't shooting, then I'm I'm losing, because they've just got to kill four times their number to even have a chance. So let's not get started on these guys. You can get eight of these people for 120 points. This is 135 points. It takes a lot of shots to kill one Vapos now, because of the changes to HE and so on. And so, um, yeah, it's really hard to deal with this because you just have to be constantly shooting. <laughs> and if you're not constantly shooting, then you're losing because the blob groweth. Over here, I could use some recon. It's like no recon here. I've got the helicopter, I suppose, but you can't drive that too close because it might die. So yeah, as long as I've got these helicopters, uh, I've got a decent chance of holding back swarms. But I need to get back in this game. And so here's what's happening here. Um, so yeah, I'm just moving forwards and just... Um, basically, when you attack, you want to attack all at once. Because if you attack in little dribs and drabs, it gives your enemy time to resupply. So I'm just moving up and making sure that there's nobody here. Because I blew up this building, right? And it's not been recruited. Lathan's bringing a recon helicopter over here because he knows I have to get back into this game somehow. And the obvious way for me to get back into this game is to attack down here. Because it's, it's you know, he sees that I'm not getting in here because he sees all his units. Just look how much rubbish there is on the field. So it's really something. I think the Vopos might be a bit cheap for 15 points. And um, this is basically a better Scorpion. Uh, and you get more of them. It's like way more. But, you know, Pact should have some advantages in terms of quantity. I feel like that makes sense in terms of divisional design. This SPG is still back here. I'm not sure what's going on over there. And, uh, yeah, by bringing Recon up over here, I can now see this one Vopos on the sides. And you see that, you know, it takes two hits to deal one damage. So it takes 12 hits to deal to kill one Vopos. And I've, you know, I deal 8 rounds a minute. So I have to shoot for 1 minute and 20 seconds. No, no. 1 minute and 30 seconds to kill one Vopos. With one tank. So, you can see my predicament here. Um, I basically just have to just shoot this all day to kill it. And this is, um, this is a... A natural... This is naturally what happens when you move into a game with lower time to kill. It just means that things take longer to kill. Having said that, I can see this CV because of the dumb spot it's in. And so I bring forwards, because my outplayer can see it, right? And so I bring forwards the tank and the artillery and the AT all to shoot it at once. And Latham's doesn't notice because he's got 10 trillion units and he just can't cope. Probably can't even see it because there's too many other blue things in the way. So yeah, I'm desperately trying to kill this CV before he reacts. And, um, you know, my T-72 misses, my howitzers don't do anything, my helicopter misses. But eventually I get it, um, simply because he didn't notice, because he's just got too much going on. And it looks like he's trying to attack over here now. So now I'm going to get my lead back, which is fantastic. And as we spoke about pushing, you've got to push. When you attack, you need to attack all at once, not in dribs and drabs. So here it is, here's the, the blob. And I really didn't have to buy that CV because I had one here. But there you go. So you see the lack of effectiveness of howitzers now. Those are a cat's ear shooting and they're not really doing anything. Um, I think they were too strong before. Uh, to give the devil his due, they were too strong before. But now I just think they're a bit useless. And there's a lot of divisions that rely on artillery and they're just now not good divisions. 
So yeah, we've got people pushing through the smoke over here to try and close the distance, but thankfully I have a Panzer Jaeger. Sadly, my cub's in a bit of a dumb spot. Um, and I've got the T-72 trying to shoot, so Lathan's has some smoke cover here, but it's not sufficient. And if I just keep driving around, I can find gaps in the smoke. And I also send a bomber wave, so the cluster drops on nothing because it's all dead. The MiG gets the recon and the napalm bombs something. And I'm in over here now and there's no backup CV here, so I'm now plus seven. So now Lathan's has to attack me. So he was preparing to defend, and now he suddenly finds he has to attack, because he lost his CV there, and I pushed in over here. And this is a pretty comprehensive push. This is not going to stop me. He needs lots of things. Typically, you would bomb. Uh, there's lots happening here, lots to talk about. So now he's trying to attack me, and he's used smoke to cut down the distance on my tanks, right? So this guy can't shoot. This guy has still managed to drive around the right and shoot a bit. But as these vehicles come through, they're just being shot by the Motschutzen and the Aufklärer. Recon helicopter trying to stop my stuff over here, but I have a Schilker in there. And there's not enough tanks. If he had waited a minute for these guys to get here, this would have been a way more successful push. But as it stands, it's infantry without fire support, because the tanks aren't here yet. And so the Vopos are moving forwards. Um, and they do take a long time to die now but they are still dying. And things like the KPVT, if you don't have auto cannons, the KPVT is what you want to be using. And yeah, the smoke clears because he'd stopped with his mortars and there's no Spetsnaz OP in here. There was one here, but I shot it. And so now all these guys are just dead because, you know, RPG-18, it's not fantastic. And the tanks weren't in position. So we now see Lathan's trying to bomb these blobs, right? But you can move the CV, and I'm pretty dispersed. He gets my T-72 with that, and I um, I use an AA plane kind of badly. I'm not sure where I'm going there. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to get this, because I thought my AA would take that. Do I get it? No, I didn't get it. It's repairing for a long time, though. Probably an eight-minute repair. And yeah, I bring the helicopters up again, and he's he's got osas, but they're not in position. This needs to be up here, but the issue with the osa is it's got less than one armor, so this can kill it. <laughs> so that's why you need man pads, or at least the FLA fifty-seven. So yeah, I'm doing a decent job at keeping back the uh, the swarm now that I've got enough T-72s. And that's the advantage of medium tank divisions over heavy tank divisions. Because if I only had one tank here instead of four, as we spoke about, you have to shoot for one and a half minutes to kill one Vopos. And, um, you know, so you just need more tanks. So the heavy tanks are bad just on a, on a, a damage output basis. They're just not shooting fast enough. So obviously one heavy tank will shoot faster than a T-72 perhaps, but um, you, you get what I'm saying, right? There aren't enough heavy tanks for the same price as there are mediums. And that's why mediums beat light tank swarms. I hope I'm making this point clear, right? Heavies beat mediums. Mediums beat lights. Lights beat IFBs. And I saw this CV over here because of this Aufklärer. I think because when he was stood here I saw that. So I managed to hit that as well with a cluster. And that massive, massive blob of units has been frittered away, essentially. Send a seed behind it. Not sure what that was for. And that's GG. So yeah, the KDA blob you keep seeing in all your games is beatable. Um, mediums beat lights don't bring heavies to fight light tanks because your one heavy will get hit by 10 light tanks and then it'll explode or it will be so low cohesion it'll have to smoke and back and then you've just lost your one tank right because if it's out of action it's, it's out of the game so i hope that makes sense and um
yeah, as I said, one of these has to kill more than four of these to pay for itself. So this guy paid for himself. This guy didn't pay for himself. He didn't kill enough units. This was when he was driving forwards into the smoke, down to RPGs. So yeah, the helicopters obviously did their job well. And yeah, the Akatsia is not, not amazing anymore. Howitzers are kind of a bit bad, uh, as are bombers. And that's what makes this light tank spam so deadly. It's that like you can't artillery it and you can't bomb it. But you can kill it with medium spam. So yeah, I bought a command tank and I used it. And it did well for itself. Having that extra tank there was really useful, but it got overwhelmed by Conkers, and it looks like a PT-76 finished it off. Those Panzer Jaegers in that building on the right, when he attacked on the right, did an amazing job at just clearing all that out. Just one Panzer Jaeger waiting for the enemy to get close enough. And because he smoked... That does help him, but it also helps me if I've got somebody on the other side of a smoke with 12 RPGs. So yeah, good game well played, and I hope you learned something, and I hope you enjoyed the game. And I am now going to show you Lathams' perspective of the game, and I suggest you check him out at twitch.tv forward slash xlathams. He is the highest level player which streams regularly in English. And so if you want to learn more in a live format, then, uh, then you would really enjoy his videos. And um, yeah, I suggest you check him out. Do never miss, but they can miss now. That's one of the heat uh, damage issues. Uh, they do splash. Uh, they used to have really large splash damage. Uh, they can miss. Okay, he is a good player. Let's see what. Uh, what would he do? His AF ASF sucks balls. His strong point is in the mid game.
do 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 What might hippie do? Taxi, заказывали? Выгружу, вот там! Neue Befehle? Every time I play against hippie, he either does something super passive or goes straight for a demon. Our best bet is over this ridge. Supported by some area denial. I get you in there. You can stay there. I get you up there. Instead of sending you there, I can send you. Okay, up there. And good line of sight, protecting. Might throw helos at me. Throw in a couple of poppers. Einsatzbefehle, Karte, Kompass. Kann losgehen. Our good tanks. Empty the coffers. <laughs> you might uh, be running seed planes. What else might he be up to? <laughs> that uh, KDA <laughs> OP Let's see if we can keep it that way. If I am a bit smarter and place you behind the buildings I can dive. Or even better, behind this tree line. You can get some side angle shots. Couple more Wopod squad. More review. I go for even more. Go, go, go. It's hitting this side. I'm pretty sure of it. Let's nice follow uh, for Obst. Schiss, 
Terrorismus und Militarismus. Feuer und Bewegung. Wir rein. Sind schwer bewaffnet und bereit für etwas Panzerschwanz. Sprung auf, Marsch, Marsch. Every time he fires on the Wapas, that's one shot not going uh, towards my tanks. Good smoke. Can you please not be Osis? <laughs> Come to pull out smoke. He's beaten back in our initial urge. That isn't the end of the world. Uh, I'm currently trying to get to the long game. Plan A has failed, and you go for plan B. Bereit machen. Flugabwehr bereit. 
Soldaten. Und eine Kupferwurst zur schaffen. Machen wir den Himmel frei! Genosse Hauptmann? Oh. Ja, Spawatz. Ich höre, Genosse Hauptmann. Wollen Sie, dass wir hier drauf gehen? Was sind Ihre Befehle? An dieser Position abgesessene Kampfweise. Achtung, Feind im Nahbereich. Sie haben verlegt. Uh, he's currently on less points. Me. Should, shouldn't mean that he is the one that's supposed. To, he's the one that should be forced to push. Best way to help in situation like this, where his tanks are better than mine, is to give them involuntary smoke. He doesn't decide if he smokes or not. AT plane or uh, not plane but helicopter. I think a smoke plus Wapos push to him could be good as a counter push. I'm not planning on doing any initial movement at the moment. Is 
tickling up the or slowly crawling up this uh, strong point. <laughs> Trying to stall at the moment. I'm currently having the advantage. There isn't really that great of a need to do anything aggressive. There's two that can play the artillery game. What we're currently seeing is also why I dislike. Death row because it just becomes a stalemate as soon as you meet someone of equal skill. Artillery useless, we Pay attention. Hütet euch vor schönen Frauen und Technik in die Rücken. 
<coughs> Digga, I'm lacking AT capabilities. <coughs> I thought these guys would be air faster. Might be able to push him out of center, anyways. Please. A bit more aggro. <sighs> Got his free trades. Well, we're finally freed from the KDA though. It's the next thing on the list. <laughs> GG. I don't think necessarily that T72 spam uh, beats KDA, uh, the KDA spam, but uh, uh, I took a lot of portraits. Misexecuted. Mm -hmm. 